Hi everybody, how you doing? Uh, I'm just doing some practicing today and a bit of recording and I thought I'd just do a quick video uh, on my Gretsch because I've not really uh, done anything on this before. Yeah, I've used it in a couple of shorts and things like that but not really uh, talked about it. Uh, I got it last January, so not this one just gone, the one before. Family all clubbed together and got it for me as a birthday present so it has uh, some sentimental value as well. I did get to try it out before I bought it and I tried it against a bunch of Epiphones etc that were in the same kind of price range and it just knocked them out of the park completely for fit and finish and sound and all the rest of it. Pretty uh, standard Gretsch configuration, the classic look. You've got a Bigsby licensed uh, trem system. Um, I fitted a roller bridge, uh, just a, a Vanson one. Uh, it's not hugely expensive but it does the job great. You've got a master volume which was actually replaced. This was a used guitar when I bought it so the, uh, the master volume cut out and uh, Guitar Guitar replaced it for free for me under warranty, which was brilliant. And uh, also got the switch sorted out because that was a wee bit gunky. And then you've got your uh, two volumes and a master tone as well, uh, which all work fine. Tuners are fine, a uh, little kind of uh, mini standard things, or well, they look mini on this headstock anyway. Uh, they do their job. They're a bit uh, gunky at times, a bit stiff, but uh, yeah. They're fine, you know, I'll re maybe replace them one day, but this is not urgent. And then the uh, kind of strap lock system that Gretsch's have. I'll do some close-ups as well so you can see all this. And so I've got this strap pretty much permanently attached to the Gretsch, um, which uh, for a lazy person like me is really good because it means I have to keep taking it on and off. And uh, I'm not sure the fingerboard material it might be laurel or rosewood. I'm not entirely sure. This is a 2021 model. So um, I don't know what the spec was then, but I'll, I'll maybe look it up and uh, stick a wee subtitle in. Aside from that, semi-hollow, big centre block through. It's not too heavy, not too light. Feels like a substantial guitar. Neck's a nice, comfortable, kind of modern C. Doesn't, uh, it says it's a U on the website, but this, this doesn't feel like a 70s Strat to me. It feels uh, uh, very much like a C shape. So I'll uh, play through a few tones. You can have a listen and uh, have a look at it. The colour's Alpine Green, in case you're wondering. And uh, when I first saw it in the pictures, I thought, mm, I'm not too sure about that, but it's, it's really grown on me. And it's nice, it goes really well with this nice kind of creamy binding as well. So looks-wise, you know, I'm all for it. It's, uh, it kind of suits me down to the ground because it's old looking, a bit like me. So here we go. Um, a few tones. I'm just running through, the reason I've got the headphones on is um, I'm running through a, a Nux or a Nuex MG30, just on a Princeton model. Um, it doesn't have a room full of expensive amps or... Uh, and I can't really whack it up loud uh, too much in here. So I'm just running through that. There's no not really any production on it. There's a bit of reverb, and that's pretty much it. And uh, I'll play through a few tones, add a bit of overdrive, and let's see what you think. So here's the neck pickup. <laughs> Obviously, with a big spay, you've always got to give it a wobble. That's the that's the that's the deal. Right. Okay. So let's do the um, middle and sorry, the middle. It's not a strat. The neck and the bridge. And then finally, the bridge. Um, yeah, so it has a nice... Uh, kind of variation of tones in between the pickups. And you can also, you know, mix and match a little bit. Now these volume controls aren't fantastic, they don't have a huge taper on them, but you can um, you can mess about with them a little bit. And, uh, you know, it's a, a lot of people like to ease off the neck pickup, especially with overdrive, when they have both pickups on, because it's a bit less woolly. And then you can adjust, the great thing about this uh, master volume, you know, you can adjust the volume without 
messing with your, your mix down here, which is cool. And the tone controls are pretty good. Um, so let's just uh, try something here. So that's the tone control all the way down. So I'll play through a an open chord, and then I'll just, you can hear the taper. So that's not too bad at all. Again, not um, not super tapered, but it's got you know it's got some. At least it's not just on and off um, like a lot of guitars. So that's really cool. Uh, to be honest, I usually just have it most of the way up anyway. So let's try some overdriven sounds uh, with the Princeton here. So give me two seconds. Right, I'll start off on the bridge pickup this time, and I'll just play something simple and loud and uh, see how it sounds. <laughs> Right, so let's go for the middle position, and that's the uh, the neck and the bridge, obviously. And uh, I'll play something similar. So here we go. <laughs> So you can hear in that position, it's a little bit woollier. So if, if I roll off the um, neck back up a little bit. So that's when you would use the, uh, the master volume as well if you wanted to kind of bring that up and down as you're playing. Okay, so neck pick up with a bit of overdrive. So you can hear the neck pickup's a little bit woollier, it doesn't cut through quite as well, but that's what, kind of what you'd expect. Where that pickup really shines is uh, on kind of mellower bluesy tones. So... You know, it kind of, it's, it's just the right uh, kind of a tone and sound. You can always kind of dial in a bit more top end on your amp if you want. Uh, also, if you take the, uh, the overdrive off, it's, you know, it's nice and mellow clean. You know, and I play a lot of Americana and kind of country rock, southern rock, that kind of stuff. So this, uh, you know, this really suits me and it suits the kind of music. And it's a great recording guitar as well. I've not had a chance to use it live yet, but um, I've used it on recordings, used it on um, the bottle and the neon lights, which you will find in all good streaming services and on this channel. Um, the most recent track I've released. And uh, it just gives me that nice kind of shimmery, uh, sound, uh, but kind of the, the kind of old retro Gretsch sound. I mean, it's not really the Gretsch sound as such. You know, it's not the Chet Atkins, you know, type Gretsch sound because the pickups are different. And obviously, I don't play anything like Chet Atkins, nowhere near. Um, <clears throat> but you know, it just with the I think with the Bigsby that just lends itself to uh, to that kind of thing. So if you see one of these, have a play, check it out. It's not for everybody. It has its quirks. You may prefer a more um, <clears throat> traditional. Gibson style, uh, like a Sheraton or a 335 or a whatever, or a dot. But uh, if you want something a bit different, a bit quirkier, have a look at these. I don't think you're going to beat it for build quality. Some of the electronics aren't fantastic, um, so some people upgrade the pots and stuff. Um, but the build quality is, I can't fault it in the slightest. It feels like a much more expensive guitar. And uh, it's just going to grow and grow and grow on me as I've had it over the last... Uh, in a year and a half or year and a bit. So yeah, thanks for watching and uh, have a great week.